Good evening and welcome to Rasmussen Foundation's Individual Artist Awards panel discussion, Artist Application Secrets Revealed. This live webcast will include tips and advice from past winners who have gone through our application process firsthand. Rasmussen Foundation honors artistic aspiration and growth and believes that artists need opportunities to explore at various stages of their careers. The Individual Artist Awards help artists to better devote their time to experimentation, education, and personal reflection. This year's awards include three categories. The Distinguished Artist Award, a $40,000 grant made to an individual who has made a lasting, significant contribution to arts and culture in Alaska. We have the Artist Fellowship Awards at an amount of $18,000 and project awards at an amount of $7,500. Here today to give you the inside scoop on application strategies are three of Alaska's most highly accomplished artists. We have Andromeda romano Lox, Hal Gage, and Sheila Wine. And I will be your host. My name is Jason Smart. I'm a program officer here at Rasmussen Foundation. Since we have the advantage of a live webcast of today's discussion, we can accept questions from our audience via Twitter. You can use our Twitter handle, at Rasmussen, and use the hashtag, YourArtAK. Or you can post on our Facebook page, or use the video chat function that you see on your video screen for those that are tuning in on the computer. We'll do our best to address as many of these questions as possible during the next hour. We'd like to begin by making formal introductions of our visiting artists. I'd like to ask each of you to introduce yourself. Please share a little bit of your history as an artist and the mediums and disciplines you pursue in creating your work. Please also share how many times you've been an award recipient with Rasmussen Foundation. Sheila, if it's okay, I'd like to start with you. Mm -hmm. My name is Sheila Wine. I'm a sculptor. I also work in art installations, um, set design primarily for theater. I also work in art inter interventions. I'm working with a group right now called the Light Brigade, and we're doing these um, single event performances in various places around town. Um, I also work in public art commissions, um, studio work for museum shows and things like that. Great. Thank you. Hal? Um, Hal Gage. I'm a visual artist, um, primarily working in photography and mixed media. I've uh, been doing art here in Alaska for the past 30-some years. Uh, I'm a two-time uh, fellowship recipient. And that pretty much covers it. <laughs> All right. And Andromeda. Yeah, I'm a writer. I've been a writer for over 20 years. And the first 10 years I focused more on journalism and travel writing. And then I took a real unexpected turn into fiction after 9-11 and have um, since then written two novels. I've also written a travelogue, creative nonfiction, and about a dozen other nonfiction books. And I do some script writing, screenwriting, and I teach writing. And I got a project award and a fellowship. Excellent. Thank you. Thanks to all of you. So to start off with uh, uh, questions. Can each of you share a little bit about what you did with the grant funding by the foundation? Maybe just give an example of uh, an activity or things that you did with, with your funding. Um, Hal, maybe we'll start with you. If that's all right. Well, the short answer is I paid bills. <laughs> um, <clears throat> it went towards um, uh, my first major uh, solo exhibition at the Anchorage <coughs> Museum. Uh, the second fellowship uh, went more to nuts and bolts, uh, getting the studio together and some computer things, you know, pretty much just uh, equipment. Excellent. And Sheila? Well, the, the first one was the fellowship, and that mainly went to, like, studio structure stuff. Mm -hmm. From uh, My studio is a really, really old building, so it always needs a lot of help. And uh, part of it went for replacing the roof down the road. It, it, that took me about three years to get everything together, but a portion of that money was saved for that. Mm -hmm. And then the project grant I used for, for um, a piece I did in the Freeze International exhibit. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, just uh, we did get a stipend for that, but the amount of time I was going to spend in that, it really only covered the materials, and so I needed some extra um, help to really pull that off. Mm -hmm. And my first project of word I used to finish my first novel, The Spanish Bow, um, and it was the, the last three months. I'd been working on it for three years, and ha I had this final three-month period where I really needed to do another spurt of writing and also go out of state to get some critical feedback from a writing coach. Mm -hmm. And just today, looking back at the materials, my application materials, I was reminded that I thought the most important part of the grant was going to be that out-of-state trip and getting the feedback, and that was very helpful. But it was also the, the morale lift of that three months that allowed me to really um, write more productively, not mm -hmm. worry about bills, and I had talked about how I needed to do that, not be distracted by freelancing, just that last burst of effort to the finish line. Mm -hmm. And then my second award, um, the fellowship, was for my second novel, the detour and it required a trip to Italy to research classical sculpture mm -hmm. and I would not have been able to finish that book without that trip. So these are great examples I mean each of you have very different uh, experiences really and how you thought about using the funds to support the work and and, uh, and that's really the intent of the program too is to provide a broad range of ways in which artists think about um, utilizing resources they may not typically have to to accomplish something that's important to to impacting their work long term. So thanks for sharing those. So any of you can respond to this, um, and maybe each of you will have something to say, but uh, how does the application process for this awards program compare to other grant programs you've applied to, if you've had that experience? You know, do you think it's easier or, or, easy, or harder or about the same? Any insight about that? Oh, well, I haven't found it any different than just about any other. Um, grant process that I've gone through. Mm -hmm. um, I have to, I'd have to go back through, you know, the, the website and, and check some of the criteria mm -hmm. out, but uh, <clears throat> generally speaking, I think it's a fairly easy and straightforward process, or it's gotten better over the years, right. for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that I, I find very similar to how, I mean, my main concern would be for people that may be way out in the bush someplace, right? And that uh, you know, I don't know if you still have a paper process, right. but but definitely just keeping that because Alaska is a place of extremes, mm -hmm. and uh, being sure that all artists have equal opportunity. Well, I'm glad you brought it up, Sheila, because indeed we do take paper applications just for that precise reason mm -hmm. that we know within the state at least there's areas that have zero broadband access or computer access, mm -hmm. or you may not have a computer at home or any of those factors, and so we we work hard to try to encourage those applications that if they come by paper and if not online. Any thoughts about yeah, and applying? I haven't, I, haven't applied, uh, I haven't applied for that many different types okay. of grants. The ones I have applied have, have had a similar process. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the main thing I like to tell colleagues is that I found the application process itself almost as helpful in a way as getting the grant. Mm. And I've, I've applied for a grant also here that I did not receive, and yet it was still very helpful right. to me right. um, because it gave me a chance to really bolster my commitment to a particular project, mm -hmm. to create a timeline and a budget. And once I'd gone through those steps, I was really ready to move forward in a different way, even if I didn't receive the grant. So right. I, I find it just a helpful proce uh, process for planning right. a project. That's, that's really true. Yep. Mm -hmm. I mean, it really, because you have to think about what it is, you're mm -hmm. trying, especially with the project grant, right. and and it can just really clarify a, a, an artist's vision. Mm -hmm. It's very helpful that way. Just out of curiosity, a little left field, but have each of you applied for? Uh, I'm thinking of other uh, artist grant resources within Alaska, and the State Arts Council does provide grants for doing certain things mm -hmm. for artists. But have each of you had that experience in applying at the arts, the State Arts Council? Oh yeah, I've yeah. gotten one for, of those. for travel grants, right, yeah. mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. or opportunity so. grants. So just knowing there's not a, always a lot of uh, choices in terms of finding uh, direct funding support for artists, mm -hmm. but it's another great program that's <laughs> important for artists to look at. I mean, the main thing about an online application is not waiting till the last day, mm -hmm. just because <laughs> but, well, just because you never really know if their server is going to hold up. Absolutely. You know, yep. try to get it in 24 hours beforehand, yeah. just so that the you know it doesn't crash on you. I, I've actually had that happen yep. where I did wait, and I couldn't get it in on time because it, it wasn't accepting yep. it. 
So. Well, that's a marvelous point, and uh, it goes on my list of things to ask, like, you know, yeah. great advice <laughs> around this program, and that's certainly one of them, and we uh, try to um, make that point as often as we can about mm -hmm. not doing it at the last minute. And, and even with this program, I mean, it can take a course of, and if you would all agree with this or not, but probably a course of at least a few weeks, if not even longer, to really look at the material, to really begin to organize your thoughts around it, and putting, you know, some of... You may already have some of the components already uh, available that you can put into an application, like a, an artist statement that may be fairly current or a collection of work samples. But uh, for sure, I'm then glad you brought that up because it's such an important uh, component and something that we stress all the time. So speaking of that and kind of related, Sheila, I was um, thinking about, uh, I believe um, you may have used our online application mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. process um, recently, and it's a fairly new system. but. Mm -hmm. Um, if, as, do you have any thoughts about our online application process specifically? I mean, would you recommend it? Do you think, is it better to just stick with a paper application from your feeling, or what do you, what do you think? No, I, I certainly like having the option. I mean, I prefer the online, I think. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, you can keep everything in one place as, right. as you craft it, as you work on it. Um, and because I keep a, a side folder, I can also send it out to other people to say, what do you think of this draft, right. you know? I mean, I, I, I often, I think in all, in, in both of the, the, gr the grants I got, um, sent them to other people to read. To, you know, because something can sound so clear in my head and it not be at all from a, a third person perspective. So the online thing just makes it easy because it's all right there on the, right. on, on the computer screen and easy to send out to other people. For either of you, Hal or Andromeda, have you found it helpful to have others look at your application materials or have you used Yeah, that I wanted to make that, I wanted to uh -huh. reiterate that, that uh, you mm -hmm. know, get feedback from people, show your work, uh, show your in our case, show your, your visual slides. Right. Um, make sure that, um, <clears throat> you know, get feedback of whether it, it feels like it's a cohesive or if it's scattered or, you know, go over the uh, artist statement, which of course is always the worst thing in the world mm -hmm. for an artist other than a writer to do. <laughs> <clears throat> um, so yeah, feedback is absolutely essential in doing a really quality uh, uh, grant application. Right. And I've never done that, but I wish I would have thought of it. I didn't think of it. That's because you're a writer. I, I, no, but if I, if I had it to do over again, I think I would want to come up with a buddy system. Mm -hmm. So I had someone else where we would make a commitment, we're going to do this, here's the, here's the mm -hmm. deadline. Mm -hmm. You know, so not just to polish it, but to right. really make you go all the way yep. with it. Mm -hmm. yep. yeah. I think in the fellowship, I, in the artist statement, I had five drafts by the end. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, I took a month and sent it to various yep. um, artist friends of mine who were writers just to check it over and, and, you know, and just to try to keep winnowing it down mm -hmm. you know, so that there was no word in there that didn't belong in there. Right. But I'm, I'm kind of a geek for that kind of right. stuff. I mean, I don't know if anybody needs to go that far, but, but I like doing it that way. That's another good point about the, you know, just the conciseness of when you get into those various sections of the application and whether it's the artist statement or even the project description and other things that it's important to have that pretty tight, right? Andromeda, you were going to say something? Well, I'm the writer in the group, but I still felt that the artist statement was the most challenging part mm -hmm. because we don't often read other people's artist statements. I mean, I uh, still sure. don't have a good sense of what right. what a, a grantor looks mm -hmm. for. Mm -hmm. So you just kind of have to muddle forward, but again, like those other pieces, it feels like a really important thing to do. Right. I think with Rasmussen, that was the first time I'd ever had to do that, mm -hmm. write up any kind of artist mm. philosophy. Mm. Uh, I've read a lot of artist statements, uh. many bad ones. Yes. Most right. of them mine. <laughs> <coughs> well, we see them all the time at, you know, like solo shows and things like that. So maybe mm -hmm. artists actually do it more than writers. And I know, but we, we do they them should. more often and more poorly. Because, okay. <laughs> because you, yes, how's right, we, we read a lot of, ones that just don't make any sense. Mm -hmm. Sounds like this is somewhere writers and artists could help each other. Oh, absolutely, <laughs> that's saying, right. We've seen this, and the writer's saying, I'll help you copy edit at the end. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, and in fact, the artist statement is one particular area of the application that I, I wanted to talk about, and, and uh, because it is really important, and, and in many cases, we often hear it's the most difficult part of, of putting it all together. 
And so, I mean, any other thoughts about like, if you, what you think about an artist statement, like what should be in there? Is there, what's the one, one or two things that come to your mind that you think, I've really got to articulate this thing, what would it be? I'm going to leave that up to Sheila. Because <laughs> <laughs> I can only think of the, the things that shouldn't go into an oh. art statement. <laughs> and usually that's what I put in it. Well, for me, I, I know that I've talked about the way I approach, what my process is. And, mm -hmm. and, and s because I work in a lot of different mediums and in a lot of different disciplines, it seems to me so that it doesn't appear confusing in my portfolio that I explain that. It's why they might see s what something in one material and then something else in a completely right. different material so that I, I might look um, chaotic right. in, in my approach and I need to explain to them that no, it, it's more of a thematic, um, a th there's a thematic through line but not a materials through line, for right. example. Right. So, so I think it's, I think it's uh, from an artist's perspective, it's thinking about how you work and just be sure that if you work in a way that's kind of crazy, like I work, then know that, that that needs to be something that needs to be explained. Right. So that it becomes a strength and not a weakness. That's excellent. Other thoughts? Andromeda, Ian? Oh, I'd love to hear what you should not do. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> that's, that's, that's well, great I'll just that's review awesome. just about any, anything I've ever written. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I, but I want to kind of uh, follow up with uh, Sheila's thing there. Um, I consider the artist statement. Um, I, I call it more a narrative than a than an artist statement. And for mm -hmm. me, it's a it's an explanation of the visuals that the the um, jury's going to look at, the panel's going to look at, uh, and um, and. And I counsel people who come to me and we talk about putting these grants together, which I, I fully uh, encourage, <clears throat> to not be modest. Right. It's you should be modest. You know, we all should be modest. But uh, when it comes to uh, presenting yourself on paper to somebody that you're never going to see and that right. they're mm -hmm. never going to see you, you have to you have to tell them all of your strengths without any modesty to make sure that they know who you are, what your accomplishments are, and so they get a, a, a good feeling of um, where you stand in your art career or your, your standing among uh, your other fellow artists. So, yeah. I, that's great. Yeah, and the word thematic resonated with me. I think that's what I've done in statements. Um, looked at what questions I'm asking in my work so mm -hmm. I don't get caught up in just subject mm -hmm. or even genre, but what questions and how that's been changing over time, you know, whether I'm taking on new risks or pushing mm -hmm. into new areas that are unfamiliar to me. So conveying that path of the writer or artist. That's right. Mm -hmm. and, and just following up on something Hal said, by, by not being modest in terms of the the writing of this, it actually shortens the statement quite a bit because you stop using things like, I really hope I, mm. you know, yeah. you use Passive. these long yeah, kind of qualifying right. um, statements and, and it, it, doesn't, it doesn't read well and it just fills up a statement with a lot of uh, meaningless words. Mm -hmm. So it, it's, it, it just really helps get to the point mm -hmm. to, to go through and, and see how, how the writing is going in that way. Yeah, absolutely. Don't, don't talk in a passive voice. Everything is, is as it is. Uh, um, I don't hope to, to make you see this in the future. You, know? you will see this in the future. Mm -hmm. or kind of this is what I do, not what I hope to accomplish. Mm -hmm. Things mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. That's good, yeah. Well, to, um, uh, we mentioned earlier as we began that we would encourage uh, questions from uh, those that are listening to the program, and indeed we've received uh, several that have come through our uh, chat tool, I think, and uh, perhaps uh, our Twitter feed and so forth. So um, I'd like to jump to, there's a several questions that are um, some uh, technical related questions about like the how-to of the process itself and a few that are really directed for review as the panelists. Uh, so uh, at any rate, let me turn to one of those questions and uh, to maybe ask the, the question, how has the award um, helped you uh, share your art with other people? If, if you feel that this kind of thing, and, and not maybe not necessarily the Rasmussen Award specifically, but 
you know, receiving funding from different sources to support your work as an artist, how does that help you um, connect with others and share your work? Do you think it does? Well, I think we're all blue collar artists here, are we not? <laughs> I mean, do any of us have day jobs that I'm not aware of? Primarily a writer. Yeah, mm -hmm. so the, this is really <laughs> important, <laughs> you know, it, it really helps us it, it helps us not only survive, but for me, it also helps um, take the edge off of when I have a slow period. Hmm. You know, when I'm, when I'm not selling work for some reason or I'm not getting a commission or whatever. Um, when you have this sort of money there, you can, you can span those times. Right. So maybe as an extension of this question, it's a little different, but do you think that this kind of funding actually creates a way for you to ultimately do more work. Mm -hmm. Like it's, I mean, it seems obvious that that's, that's what we hope in, in supporting the program that we hope is an outcome. But I don't know from your own experience, does it really pan out that way? Does it, the end result, if you looked over the span of your career as an artist and you thought, well, I received funding at these different points in time and you know, does the cumulative effect mean that you're more generative? I mean, I'm just curious. Oh, absolutely. I mean, to me, it was the key catalyst in my entire career as a writer. So, you know, I don't want to overpromise mm -hmm. to anyone else going for the grant, but it came at just the right moment where it pushed me up to another level where I'd been writing locally and regionally and then was able to finish a novel and get it published very soon after receiving mm -hmm. the grant mm -hmm. that took me to the international level. And then in the second case, because as we all know, just because you have success once doesn't mean it'll come the next time. I mean, you're still not able to pay the bills and everything a couple <laughs> years later. Right. Then it was again hitting this plateau that I could not really get mm -hmm. out of until I had the support and, and a book that would not have been written. And so the mm -hmm. career would have been interrupted at that point. So for me, it was more important than any other degree, job, honor, anything else that I could name. And probably more important than Rasmussen could know um, because it's that big considering the okay. modest amount of the money. Mm -hmm. right. Well, I'll say the money was, um, was useful. Uh, it definitely came at an important and um, opportune time for me. Um, but I'll have to say that the money really was secondary to the process. Um, getting the recognition from the Rasmussen Foundation, even though it was the, the first year that they'd done it and they didn't really have a track work record or mm -hmm. a um, uh, or much, you know, penetration into the public or, or uh, being known, that is. Um, still, that recognition of getting a fellowship, uh, to me, allowed me to, to um, consider myself an artist. I mean, hmm. certainly I've been working at it for, at that point, up to about 20, 25 years, and uh, I had a fairly good resume, and, but, uh, but it was the, it was the recognition from the found foundation that actually gave me that uh, that bit of self confidence that I just mm -hmm. didn't have before, and so it was a great honor, and uh, and I, I really appreciated it, and it, and it made, really made a big difference on how I moved forward in my own career. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thanks I'm for sharing that. I'm a bit more pragmatic than you. Is the money? <laughs> the money. It I, helps, right? It's good. The money so helps. much, you know, and, yeah. and I, you know, I mean, it, it is. It's a really nice honor to get recognized as well, and it helps. It helps in one's, um, you know, resume and stuff. But man, I mean, you know, when you're just when you're having to make up your budget every month from right. completely out of thin air these things make a huge difference to artists. That's great. And then I also wanted to respond to just looking at the larger category of, say, writers. Um, looking back at my application materials from 2005, I had mentioned how Alaska was a place for wonderful creative nonfiction writers, but I myself, as an aspiring novelist, didn't know many other Alaska novelists. And when I look at the number of awardees since then, how writing has just flourished in Alaska mm -hmm. and all the different people. So I feel like now there's this larger group that can support each other in, mm -hmm. in other ways because so many people have gotten pieces of funding and been able to move mm -hmm. forward. I think it's changed so the state. So you've met people just because this grant exists. Then I mean, you now know of them. Yes. Wow, yeah, interesting. I, yeah, I, I thought I, about that. Mm -hmm. That's great. And it sounds like it's, it's building. 
a or group community. or yeah, yeah. A community um, which may not have uh, existed prior. Right. Right. Which is also really important for artists, and I assume for writers too. And we hang together, so we don't hang separately. That's you right. know, we really depend on each other a lot. We problem solve together and stuff. So the more, the stronger the community is, the better our off individual artists are. Right, and that's what I met with the writers, a number of writers who mm -hmm. have gone on to publish yeah. their first novels or collections, and now it's, there's a critical mass that builds because of that. Mm -hmm. There's another question that I'll ask, because I think this is a, a good question, um, interesting to think about. So uh, this person says, uh, what should we write in the very first line of our application uh, to make a jump off the page for the judges? And uh, from, it, from your perspective, as you thought, well, what is it that you would put into your application? Early on, <laughs> maybe the first line. The first that line that you think is important. The first line certainly would be your name, and if your <laughs> name isn't got that contact information, appeal, <laughs> you, should, you should make up a name. You know, Just maybe you can become the next share. I don't know. Maybe in the project description section, what, what what might that thing be? I'd have to go back and look at yeah. the application itself. Uh -huh. Yeah, I would almost worry. I, I I don't know if this answers the the person's question. But I wouldn't want to make people too anxious about how well it has yeah, to be written right. because in some yeah. cases it's just really straightforward. Yeah. It's just saying, here's what I want to do, here's the time on, here's how I'll spend the money, here's why it matters to me, in a, in a pretty straightforward way. Yeah, well, a lo logical narrative. Yeah. When, when I first start, my, my first draft of anything like this, is, it's really more of a grocery list. I just start, put, it's like, okay, what do I want to do with the money? Put that down. How long is it going to take? Put that, you know, I'll just start laying out um, a, a, in no cohesive order at all, just to get all, as much of the, what I do know inside my head down on the page. I can start shaping it later. And I think, I think that's the thing that might be a good way for somebody to start, um, is not worry about that first sentence, that first line, and, and how that's going to jump off the page. First, just be sure you've got all of the information down there, and then you can begin to shape it. And and I find making lists really easy. Maybe other people, maybe that's not a good approach for other people, but it takes the pressure off of, you know, sentence structure and stuff because mm -hmm. I'm just trying to get the, the facts down. Right. All right. So I want to shift gears just a little uh, in terms of how we're, and talk about some of the more practical components of the application process itself, and and. Um, and this, this question's around um, getting feedback on your applications um, and an element of the, the program that we have here that has been evolving over time, uh, but has been uh, to request the panelists who review these applications to provide constructive, um, critical feedback to applicants. And, um, and I'm not sure for all three of you if all of you have at some point in time in your application process received feedback from panelists as a part of this program. And, but if you have, um, I would appreciate hearing any thoughts that you have about like, do you think that kind of critical feedback is helpful in a, in a process like this? Um, and, and it's okay to say no, it's not helpful. But, um, but what are your thoughts about that? Is that a good thing or? Well, I'd say absolutely. Um, no, I've not received any on any mm -hmm. of the uh, um, ones that I've been involved in, but uh, I would certainly, uh, have liked it, and I would definitely uh, encourage it. Uh, it kind of opens up that black box. Hmm. You know, when you put your application in, you just don't know what's happening on the other side of that curtain until right. it, until the thing comes back out with an answer, yes or no. And it would be like it'd be nice to know what that process was and and uh, how they felt about your material. Certainly, so if the Rasmussen is, can coordinate that, mm -hmm. I would definitely encourage them to do that. The um I talked with some writers from last year, yeah. um, and in terms of feedback, it was very brief and right. rather cryptic, uh -huh. and nobody knew what to do with it. Right. So I, th I think it's, it's, it needs to be one way or the other, because it, it set up a lot of mind games <laughs> in some right. ways, and, and some of it was even contradictory, you know, uh -huh. between from one yeah. juror to the or juror, or whatever, or panelist, yeah. whatever you call it. Yeah. So they didn't know what to do with it, and, they, and, and it was confusing. And I think because they were, the feedback was so short, it was like a line right. or something right. from each one, and that's, that's probably not enough. So for right. it to be valuable and not throw people into, you know, tailspins right. of, 
what to do with it, they, they either need to spend a little more time on it, right. or, or if they can't do that, it might be better not to mm -hmm. have it. Yeah, I, although I would great. prefer that's to good. have that's it. That's good to hear. Yeah. I would, you know, I'm with Hal. But I'm surprised that they that you're even offering it just because of the sheer amount of, of stuff that they rights. have to go through. Yeah. Um, how can they possibly give a fee? How that's can right. they take the time to give that kind of feedback to individuals? Um, I mean, if they can, I think it's a good idea. But I think Sheila's point that uh, right. that uh, uh, it's about uh, quality, not quantity. That's right. You know, so if they can't if they can't give you something that's really worth hearing. Yeah then it would be better not to hear anything at all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's, if, it, if they could hear from somebody uh, uh, at the fly on the wall, so to speak, <laughs> uh, whoever uh, sits in with that uh, right. committee that doesn't have anything to do with the voting, right. they've watched them. I think that does happen, does it not? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. That probably would be a good person to uh, give some feedback. Right. You know. Say the, the, say the visuals process. that you submitted just didn't click and it didn't uh, didn't move the process forward. Or, right. um, you know, your narrative was wonderful, but you know, right. this other part just fell flat. Any other that sounds about? sensible to me. I think I would probably agree with that. But the one bit of feedback I recall from a grant that I didn't get was it might have said um, the writing sample not as strong. And at least that told me, okay, it's not the budget, it's not the timeline, right, it's right. this particular writing sample. And as a writer, I get cryptic feedback all the time from agents and editors and readers. <laughs> so I sort of accept right, that. That right. so we should just be coming one to more you. clue. Yeah. When we, you know, we're not I can't understand, understand it. So. I can't understand, but it's just one more clue, That's and it's right. just and another Robert, two can you cents. Please decode this? <laughs> And I think Decipher. the main thing is, just as in the application itself is a really good way of developing your sense of yourself as mm -hmm. a writer, um, being able to deal with a little bit of that feedback, that critical feedback, is, mm -hmm. is a good practice, mm -hmm. even well, if certainly it is cryptic. It's, it has been a goal of this program in the past couple of years, mind you, to have a, a mechanism to be able to capture that panel feedback in a way that could be turned around in a practical sense. And, and provide it back to artists, and um, so but it's been a little bit experimental, and uh, I think this is wonderful feedback to hear in, in terms of um, looking at our specific process and um, and that topic more broadly about um, critical feedback on on applications like this, and you know it's a, a tough line to have to walk for an artist to to see that. So I just appreciate good, that it's a feedback. work in progress. Right. I mean that you're <laughs> behaving like an artist or writer. You know, taking feedback and shaping right. it each year. Right, well, that's good. Um, all right. So uh, the next thing I'd like to talk about a little bit, and this could hopefully this will be an interesting landscape, is um, and something that comes up often and questions about our program is um, work samples and what gets included into uh, an application. Um, the first part of this question would be, um, how do you decide what to include in your application? Do you have a sense of like, are you going for like the depthness of your work or more of the breadth of like, I want to get as many things as I can into here? Do you have, do you have thoughts about um, what you think is important to represent in your, in your work samples? I have very distinct opinions and I give them out to my fellow artists quite a lot, but I really want to hear what <laughs> Sheila has to say about that before I say anything. Do you want to tell me why you want to Because I, because I'm curious to know if you follow the same formula that I do. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, the secrets revealed. So here's exactly. our here's, here's we but, Okay, so um, secrets of the crypt. I've got <laughs> a, a pretty broad range, and and what I don't do is try to show a huge uh, from A to Z. You know, one of each. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's already some selective criteria in what you can select. Yeah. In terms of how old they can be, for right. example, what That's is true. it? Five, five, five years? years? No more than five years old. Right. So, but even from that, you know, it can still. I have to think about it quite a bit mm -hmm. to decide. What What are some of the main themes do that I feel like I've been following, in this last five years, and then see if there's one that I feel like is the is stronger than any of the others, or is there a way of creating a composite that that isn't too confusing, you know, a, a, a series of images that doesn't still d won't make me look like I'm all over the map. Um, but it can be it can be hard. I can spend a lot of time 
you know, rearranging the chairs on the Titanic, so to speak, <laughs> trying to figure <laughs> out what's the, you know, what's the, not, on, not only what are the images, but then what, what's the orient, or the, not the orientation, what I meant to sequence? Get, the sequence of mm -hmm. the images. Because even that will change right. the story somewhat mm -hmm. with, um, with, with how they're presented and what order they're presented. Sure. Yeah. So what about you? Exactly. Do we match? Yeah, <gasps> we precisely. I, I tell people choose one body of work and show, show your 10 slides of that body of work. Um, make it a good one, you know, one that you feel really good about and you think that uh, explains who you are. But um, it does you no good to, to in my case, as a, as a photographer working in, in bodies of work, it would do me no value to do two slides of this body of work and two slides of that and two slides just to show this really broad range, you know, of my capabilities. Because uh, the way it comes across, in my opinion, the way it comes across when somebody sees that, that doesn't know you, doesn't know your work, is, well, they can, they can make some good images here, some good paintings, good photographs, whatever they might be but they don't seem to connect. So obviously, you know, they can, they can do one good one, but can they do That's right. 10 good ones within a theme? This is interesting, because Hal and I actually work very differently. He, I mean, you can correct me if I say yeah. this wrong, but Hal gets an idea and goes out and he's looking forward towards this body of work. That, that you're going to be, fo you know. Yeah, mine might take 10 or 20 years. But, but, to but you know the body of work that you're moving towards. Mm -hmm. I, on the other hand, kind of describe my studio work as the process of walking backwards. I don't know where I'm going. Mm -hmm. And that's part of why I do it that way, because I don't want to know where I'm going. If I can, if I can write out what, or, or draw out what I want to make, I feel like I don't need to make it. So I'm, I'm going blind, and then over time, as work is completed, I find those, those themes and those bodies of work. And it's like, oh, well, this piece and this piece, they go together. So we, we progress through the landscape in, in exactly, we're like Janice, you and I. I no, feel I like. have to say that we're, we're not too far, <laughs> we're not too dissimilar in that, uh, because you know, I continue to just make uh, work and it's the reflection looking back on it that mm -hmm. I start to see the patterns and then say, okay, well, this mm. is a collection. Okay. And at that point, I might then start to, you know, focus on doing just that uh, to fill it out. Mm -hmm. But um, the first part was very much like your process. Okay. Later on, though, it might be a bit more pragmatic. Yeah, and, and you're very, cl you, know, you know your body of work yeah. at that point. At and that point. Yeah, and so I've got this intermediate step where I have to figure out the body of work, and, and this is after it's done, you know, and, and I'm not, but I think the main thing is artists need to be really strong editors and they need to know, um, they, need, they need to be fearless about choosing the body of work that's the strongest, and that's a hard thing for mm -hmm. a visual artist to do yeah. because we try to throw in extra pieces to sort of bolster up, you know. Uh, of the, the things portfolio. We've, of right. the things we've talked about so far, um, statements and now editing, those are, in my experience, those are the two things that visual artists can't do. <laughs> <laughs> it's, their, it's, it's their weakness. <laughs> Writing is difficult for a visual artist and, and uh, uh, editing, I found that uh, editing for most people is difficult because, you know, we love a piece. You know, they're our child. Mm -hmm. and to be brutal and, and throw that one out and, you know, accept that one is, is just difficult, you know, mm -hmm. it's just... You know, writers say the same thing about sentences and paragraphs okay. and, you know, kill your darlings. Mm -hmm. I'm surprised by how similar it is. I thought, it sounds like the writer, or the artist's job is much trickier, but it's similar in that as a writer, you can be tempted to say, well, I want to take, you know, five pages here and five pages here and five pages here because I want to show the range even within this novel in progress. Mm -hmm. And instead, I think it's better usually just to take that first 20 pages. And if, of one if, thing. of one thing, mm -hmm. usually, yeah. you know, maybe right. two pieces, maybe. But if starting at the beginning is not a strong enough start, well, then you probably need to revise that novel or that short story collection. <laughs> so, well, you know, the first part should pull people in and give them a map of the whole project right. anyway. Right. And indeed, that's true that in our guidelines we talk about for the literary art um, work samples to, you know, submit probably something that's a continuous flow of, I mean, if it's a narrative or a, a chapter of a, a book or something along those lines. That, but we all have that same impulse of we want to show all the right. different oh, things yeah. we've right. thought of that we've worked on. 
Yeah. But, and part of the reason I think we want to do that is because we, we are not confident. And we all have various bodies of work where some pieces are stronger than others. And so with a lack of confidence, you would just want to take the strongest from all these different bodies, and then you end up with goulash, you mm -hmm. know. Right. And better to just, you know, stay strong and, and, and put, submit it that way. Get the feedback if there is good feedback. Right. And then, you know, if you need to apply again, apply again. Yep. Um, one thing that, uh, that I've mentioned to a number of people that are submitting uh, these for this grant is um, <clears throat> I know you've done a lot of different things and they're all wonderful, but you know, focus on one body of work. And I say, if, if it's so important to you that, that the people know that you do more than just this one thing, you don't want them to think you're a one-trick pony, flesh it out in your narrative. Right. Oh. And there you go. Yep. Great advice, <laughs> and that is something that we consistently try to encourage people to think about, because you're right, you've got a limited space or time or way of conveying your work, and mm -hmm. so, um, you know, the, the parts of maybe one thing to say about <coughs> the whole application itself that we try to em emphasize is think of it as the whole package, so that um, from the artist statement to the project description to the work samples and the budget, that all those pieces thread together in a way that, you know, you look at the whole package and it it has some balance to it and, and some focus. And, uh, so these are wonderful comments. Um, just to ask more of a technical question for a moment, uh, and um, because this comes up a lot for, for work samples, and then there's um, somebody submitted a question as well uh, online for us that uh, around what does it take, maybe for Hal and Sheila um, specifically, because you need to provide images of your work. Um, is it challenging to, you know, get the, <coughs> to technically capture um, quality images of your work, for example. I mean, as a photographer, you, maybe there's a slight advantage you have, Al, but um, is, this, is this difficult to do? If it isn't do quality think? already, it's, <laughs> That's right. it's not going anywhere. <laughs> so, but any thoughts that you have about the technical aspects of, of getting work samples together? Well, for me, I just hire Hal. <laughs> there you go. So, I mean, you know, they, especially for the more difficult um, work, I'm, I've hired you for quite a few yes. things. Thank you. And very much. oh no no, <laughs> it, I'm, uh, um, but you know, but there's also there's also times when either you know the budget's not there for me to h hire an actual professional photographer, or or I think I can I can at least I know enough about photography that I can probably kind of slide through. Right. It won't be top notch. But it'll be good enough mm -hmm. for until at least till I can afford to get it properly documented. Um, so I, I kind of do it both. But you ways. definitely place an emphasis and an importance on the documentation of your work. Oh yeah. I mean, matter of fact, I right. will document work now because now it's so easy. I mean, now you can pull out your phone, you know, right. and and you can document a, along the way even which is, is sometimes super useful, you know, bef in, in a piece before it's even done. Um, because you can, you know, start off on a red herring and realize you need to back up. Mm -hmm. and, and you can have these process photos and know, ah, there's the other turn, there's where I should have gone. Mm -hmm. That kind yeah, of thing. That's, that's but yeah, it, but it's very important, I think, to document. Yeah, well, just get your materials together, get your equipment together. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you can't do it yourself, then, then do hire somebody else to do it. Yeah. Or get creative. Do some trades. Yeah. I've, mm -hmm. You know, I've done that, you know. And there, there's a lot of different ways you can do it with, without a lot of budget. Yeah. So any other thoughts about um, work samples that are important, you think, to share? If not, we'll move to another topic, but I just, I know, before I close that, I so do you photograph your? <laughs> <laughs> well, I do. You know, I save multiple you just, drafts. Mm -hmm. That just reminds me of the process. Them, maybe that mm -hmm. That's, yeah. that's yeah. true, yeah. right? That's right. That's right. It's kind of the same thing. Yeah. Um, so, uh, what do you think about the the time investment on a process like this? Um, do you think that I mean, if you get if you apply and you receive an award, probably you're more inclined to say, yeah, it was worth my time, <laughs> as opposed to the other thing, but. In, in whole and in entirety, if you think, well, to undertake the energy that's required of going through this. I did hear some of you say uh, earlier on, you said there's some value in the process in and of itself that 
perhaps um, is worth consideration. But just any other thoughts about um, the value of time and, and doing something like this? Well, I think there's complete value. I'm always going to jump in there because I think it's so important that people apply for grants and if, if there's a question, am I ready yet, is this project ready yet, we'll just do it because right. you're going to get something out of it. Um, and if you've been rejected before, that doesn't mean at all that you shouldn't apply again. Mm -hmm. So I mm -hmm. like to tell people that I have been rejected for this and for other opportunities. Right. So absolutely. All right. Well, I know that we've got uh, several more questions that have been submitted. Uh, through our uh, online chat tool and other sources, and so I'd maybe um, let's explore a couple of them, and, and, uh, and we'll see. Some of them are kind of practical questions about the process itself, but um, but maybe get your input as well. Um, so let's see. One question at the top here: How many times have the uh, well for each of you, I suppose? How many times have you uh, applied for uh, this grant before you received a grant? I don't know if you just applied and boom, it was there, but has, have you applied more times than you've received a grant? I can right. say that. Yeah. Yeah. I've applied mm -hmm. three times and gotten it twice, mm -hmm. but the very first time I applied, I uh -huh. did get one. Okay. And how? I think the same. I, I've only applied for a project grant once and I didn't get it. Right. Mm -hmm. Yep. And my pattern is like Sheila. So got the first one, didn't get the second one, got the third uh -huh. one. But it is really an important point that, I, I mean, um, for the three of you that is uh, as accomplished as you are in your work and and there's no question in terms of the contributions that you make creatively and as an artist um, but that um, the the nature of a program like this and, and I don't think that this program s stands alone around this but just the notion of that in a competitive program of this nature in which the dynamics of the review process um, consistently change in that for those that are listening um, may not be aware so we have uh, panelists that come from outside of Alaska and convene to review these applications and the makeup of that panel uh, constantly changes. So occasionally we might have somebody come back, one out of a dozen panelists who have some experience in our process and, and that helps. But you know, more or less the dynamics really change up. So um, if uh, for any of you who have uh, applied before and uh, to not get too discouraged, I suppose, is something that we always um, You can't take it make. personally. Right? right. You, you just can't. Yep. <laughs> Because it's that's that, that's just going. You're, you're not going to want to apply again. And these things, these types of programs, are kind of a lifeblood for artists. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. I think of it just like uh, jury shows. You're going to be submitting right. to right. try and get into a jury show. And sometimes mm -hmm. you're going to get rejected. Um, but the process of filling out the forms and getting the print ready or the painting ready and documenting it possibly and you know, all those kinds of things are something that will help you in the long run. Right. It, it, it gets you ready for the next time when you mm -hmm. do get accepted. Yeah, and I'd say the odds for a writer is it's not unusual to send a manuscript out to 30 agents even before the editor process, the, the publishing house process, and you know finally get one agent after 30 right. tries or get one publishing house after mm -hmm. 50 tries. Mm -hmm. That's the name of the game and this is a really good mm -hmm. way to just practice mm -hmm. that and to take the good news as encouragement and to just disregard the bad news, <laughs> <laughs> not give it too much weight, just move right. on. Right, that's great. Um, responding to another question uh, is uh, using the grant to pay bills to focus on only uh, art, uh, a legitimate expense. Uh, and it says here, Andromeda specifically, <laughs> as a writer, please describe how one might present the need for time and income to, in order to uh, complete it. Yeah, well, I, be I believe it's completely legitimate, and I believe that's Rasmussen's mm -hmm. um, it, it position. It is, absolutely. And so in the case of my first um, project when I was finishing up the Spanish Bow, I was very specific about I need this chunk to get out of state to go get this critical feedback, but I also need this number of months, and then that still was not going to be enough. I knew I'd mm -hmm. have to use my PFD. I knew I'd have to use the savings. So as a writer, I'm definitely a feast or famine kind of writer, um, week to week, day to day sometimes. And so the ability to finish a project I'm always amazed by how art is created by the slimmest of margins, how it's just needing to get by a few more weeks, a few more months, yeah. even if you've been working on something for years. Right. And I think right. that's legitimate. That's, yeah, it's so true. Great. Another question has to do with um, the grant amount, and um, specifically uh, for our grant awards, um, somebody's asked the question, does one have to spend the whole $7,500 or up to it? And actually, for our project uh, grant awards, we strongly encourage, and we've even taken a little step further this this year to request um, 
a budget of $7,500 for a project. Um, we've had, in some cases, um, very modest requests from artists uh, around uh, project activities of which uh, we've seen an application come in, for example, of like $900 of um, what used to be our, we changed the award amounts uh, this year and uh, this used to be a $5,000 grant and, and now it's increased to 7,500. But the message we're trying to get out at the foundation is that um, to be creative <laughs> and to find your way toward thinking of how you can invest a whole $7,500 into your work and, and what you're doing. And so um, the answer is to, um, to plan on, make, make a plan for utilizing an entire amount of $7,500 for the grant. Um, and then the, another related question of this is, are you put under more consideration for wanting to spend the whole $7,500 or probably less? And there's no competitive advantage to um, applying for uh, less. I think that's that. a misunderstanding. Yeah, I think people right. think they have a bigger chance if they ask no. for less. Whereas I tend to write up a budget that's way beyond the grant amount, <laughs> and then right. this is just one little piece. Right, mm -hmm. right. So, so definitely no for our program. Um, there's no competitive advantage to do less than what uh, the grant amount is that's proposed. Uh, and then also maybe uh, conversely, what Adrian had just said about thinking of how uh, this kind of grant funding could fit into a, a larger project. Uh, it is important to also articulate in your um, in your project description or what you're doing. If you're trying to accomplish something that has, has a higher expense than what the grant funds can support, uh, that you do also speak to how you'll get to that, accomplishing that goal. And there may be different ways in which that will happen, but um, that's an important point to always emphasize is to say, if I'm going to do this $15,000 thing and I get 7500 from the foundation to do it, then I'll make it happen the other part through this, you know, so. Just a, a point we'd like to make. I wonder if either of you has done the same thing. I've sometimes said the whole amount, and a lot of it I've already earned and used. You know, so if I say this project is going to cost me thirty thousand, but I'm at the finish line, mm -hmm. I don't know if that's something. That yeah, I think more or less that, that can happen. To sort of show how much you've already invested mm -hmm. in the project. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, because you have the documentation of that. Mm -hmm. That's right. right. Yep. Yeah, I think that's always that's good. true with uh, uh, the ASCA grants. They, they. Actually, it's more competitive for you to ask for less, but they also, if it's a project that's going to take more than their maximum, <coughs> uh, for you to line out exactly where right. the rest of the sources of income are going to come. You and know. you're referring to the State Arts Council grant mm -hmm. program, right? Yep. Alaska State right. Council on the right. Arts. Right. I'd have a question for you, though. Okay. On the, uh, uh, on the um, fellowships, how, how much emphasis has now been put on to a the use of the money, the budget, we'll say. Uh, at, the, at the very beginning, you know, they, they simply stated that this was an out-and-out -out grant. Right. We're not really concerned with what you're going to do for it. Mm -hmm. We just want it to help you uh, as an artist. Um, from there, it seems to have gotten a little bit more, not restrictive, but certainly more, they want to know more about what you're going to do with the money. So where, are we, where do we stand now? And we definitely tried to make a distinction between what somebody would propose on a project award application that has those specifics about, you know, the different cost components that are related to what you're trying to accomplish. And, and we're not asking for that in the fellowship application. But looking toward just an, a, a broader articulation about if I have this kind of resource, how I think about making that investment in myself. And again, because of the, the range of options and how to, how to think about a, a accounting for the funds, if you will, can be from um, something as simple as setting time aside uh, that is focused on me doing my work and offsetting, you know, you might have costs related to, you know, your, your daily life or other things that, you know, in a practical sense, you would be trying to offset with those funds. But um, it's just really about um, thinking about the investment and, 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 and how to do that uh, for an individual artist. So, so th let me be clear, Rasmussen is, is not terribly interested in my ambition for Cancun. Exactly, right. <laughs> okay. So. <laughs> So we are uh, approaching uh, the, the closing of our hour. And so uh, I think um, we'll move toward um, making some, uh, wrapping this thing up and, and making some closing comments. For those of you who have taken the time to um, watch our program tonight and to submit questions, 
uh, we very much appreciate uh, you doing that and we will uh, make an effort to follow up on um, these questions that have been submitted. For those that we know that we can reach back and respond to, um, we'll make every effort to do that. And uh, maybe the one final question to ask each of you would be to, to think of um, if you have one other bit of advice that you'd offer up to somebody who's considering applying, if there's any last closing thought that you would have, um, uh, we'd love to hear it. That actual secret that we haven't actually Yeah, there is that, that last yeah, secret yeah. said yet. <laughs> so. Well, the first thing to do is don't put it off. This is one of those things that, you know, the initial start of it can seem like, oh, God, i got to go to the dentist sort of thing, you know, <laughs> writing out a grant. And it's better to start it right away in the most simple form, forms possible that makes sense to you and how you think. You know, if you're a list person, you can start that way. If it's a different way, you can start that way. But just start it so that every couple of days you can go back to it and just do a little bit more and, and, and tighten it up. And, and to be able to think that you've got it all done and you still have two weeks to go so that you can observe uh, like the, your sequence of images, for example, if you're a visual artist, and see how it strikes you after you've had some time away from it. Mm -hmm. it's, it's very, very useful to have it ready before and then set it aside so you can take one last look at it before you submit it. Yeah, start early, you know, give yourself a month mm -hmm. at minimum. <clears throat> and I like to do it just by biting in small chunks. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, can't, I can't address the entire form at once. You know, it might be just, well, okay, I'll start gathering up slides. Mm -hmm. Or I'll write out this really rough draft of a narrative that kind of puts down all the points that I think are important about me, and I'll edit it later. Um, uh, I'll pull together a resume make sure that it's up to right. date, those kinds of things, you know, just one at a time. Just, And then I'll start pulling them together, look at them as a whole. Uh, and definitely, the, I like what Sheila said about uh, giving it some time to ferment and come back and look at it and see if it's all of what you thought it was when right. you first put it together. Great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Hal made the comment about not being modest in the form itself. And so I would say to writers, to not be modest to yourself, to use this as an opportunity to say, to really think about where would I like to be in five years or mm -hmm. 10 years? How would this money really change what I could do? So at whatever level I'm at right now, what's the one more step? Mm -hmm. So if I'm admitting I'm a short story writer, could I put together a collection? If I have a novel that's nearing completion, could I get some more feedback or go on a trip or do something? Could I do more research? So to just keep looking at what is the one additional step and where you want to be later and how this could feed into that. That's great. Well, thank you so much for taking this time with us uh, this evening. It's been a great discussion, and uh, we hope it's um, helpful to any prospective uh, applicants. So this will wrap up uh, tonight's webcast. Um, as I mentioned, if we didn't get to your question on Twitter or Facebook or the chat tool, we'll do our best to respond and uh, keep that information flowing out there. Uh, we are recording this session and expect to have uh, this available through our uh, YouTube channel hopefully by the end of the week or um, so watch for that if uh, you want to share that with your, uh, your friends or family or colleagues uh, to get that information out there. Also, uh, most importantly, please don't forget that the uh, deadline for applications for this year's program is March the 1st. Uh, applications are available uh, online at our website or by request. If you're listening to the program but not watching or don't have um, uh, internet access, you can call our office at 907-297-2700 or toll-free in Alaska at 877-366-2700. You can also write us here at the Foundation at 301 West Northern Lights Boulevard, Suite 400, Anchorage, Alaska, 99503. And you can visit us on our website at rasmussen.org or Facebook facebook.com slash Rasmussen Foundation. Thank you very much. <laughs>